graphical study of the life and ministry of James Olumade Tonde. And our presenter who has been working on this figure is Jeremiah Oluwadari from Nigeria, where he teaches at the West Africa Theological Seminary in Lagos. We'll yield the floor to Jeremiah now, and he has one hour within which to share his presentation with us. Jeremiah, over to you. Thank you, Prof. I must say that um, the mirror has been set, uh, having to present alongside my professor, uh, Adolfini. Uh, I listened carefully uh, to the presentation and to the questions, and I've learned a lot. I want to, first of all, uh, appreciate my uh, supervisor, uh, rector, uh, Professor Kwashi, and my co-supervisor, uh, Dr. Um, Femi Adeleye. I want to also uh, appreciate the Dean of Accredit Accredited Study for giving me this opportunity to share. Um, in doing this, I'm going to be dividing what I'm going to share into these categories. I'm going to uh, be uh, sharing with us for a few minutes a video clip on Shonde uh, for us to have at least a glimpse of uh, who he is and the environment uh, from where he actually uh, ministered. And then I will go into the paper presentation and uh, at a point I will pause to share the PowerPoints of some source materials I've collected and then go back to the, uh, present, the paper presentation to round up. Now I am presenting uh, the, the few clip on the, the, the video. This is a video on the induction service of uh, James Ulumade Shonde as the first district pastor of Yaba District Center. This is uh, Pastor C. Odambanjo, the Dane, and what we are having on the video now is James Sulumare Shonde himself, the Dane uh, Lagos Area Superintendent. Pastor C. Odambanjo is introducing him. Now we have been introduced to the fact that he has just been transferred from Akoka Assembly to Yaba Assembly. They are given a chart to show you. This is James Sulumade And this is the Yaba DC Center.
is being given a charge here and he's saying that he is with reference accept the posting from Akoka Assembly to Naba Assembly. Is a, a pastor and evangelist. This is the wife standing, and that's the first daughter, uh, the bukun that is standing beside you. It's beside her. Now, having asked the, having asked shown the, they are now asking the assembly if they accept you. Now the church is rising up to say that we have accepted his transfer to Yaba Assembly. Now I'm going to pause here and going to show to us a little about uh, his induction as the district pastor of Yaba Assembly. That is the wife. So what we have heard uh, and we have seen, it just distributed to a district and it was inducted as uh, the first uh, district pastor of uh, um, Yaba district. Now I go to the presentation. The topic that has been given, that I'm uh, presenting, just as it, the director has said, is discovering source materials for the auto biographical study of the life and ministry of James Olumade Shunde. It should be the rationale uh, for the research. It should be said from the beginning, from the very beginning, that the field of historical and biblical uh, biographical study is new to me. The intention initially was uh, to do a, a further a research on the field of biblical studies. For instance, my MTH uh, dissertation was carried out on modern term biblical hermeneutics. However, the, the research in historical studies is inevitable thanks to the exposure here at Akofi Crystal uh, Institute, uh, especially in following the part of my supervisor to trace how the emerging church from the Western Missionary Era branched out of the incipient uh, Pentecostal and Ladura churches uh, in Africa, particularly in Nigeria and Ghana. Additionally, the apparent neglect of the documentation 
of indigenous agency has motivated interest in doing a, a biographical study on the subject of the current research, uh, just as Femi Adelaide did for Samuel J. Crowder. More so, Crowder's Yoruba Bible translation and his Yoruba primer were instrumental in catalyzing the Soy revival as the Emmanuel at the Emmanuel Anglican Church in Jebu Mushi in 1894 to uh, the 1900s, from where Sophia Odulami, one of the pioneers of the Aladra movement, was born. It was from Ijebu Mushin, Ijebu Shoi, uh, church that Sophia joined the Saint Savior group. When Adela had choice, a choice of a Crowder, uh, when Adela had choice of Crowder is an area uh, which much documentation, at, at least the subject is well known, but James Olumade Shonde is much obscured, but known in his constituency as nothing has been written on him until now in the academia. Why biographies have been written respect respectively on the lives and contributions of Western missionaries to the advancement of the Christian faith and missions in Africa. Much more needs to be done on the African counterparts. One of the, the concerns of this thesis is that why so much has been written on the pioneers of African independent churches, AICs, Aladra, uh, Dito Aladra, and the uh, Christ Apostolic Churches, only can you find substantial literature on the con contributors to the expansion of Christianity within the apostolic Aladra churches that fell under the British missionaries after the 1935 to 1938 schism, especially of the precious stone uh, church talk. As Arotona indicates, of the early leaders, only Babatope and Fasson from Elisha remained at the British church. Most of those who left formed a new body. By 1941, they were established as the as the Christ Apostolic uh, Church, which with nearly 100,000 members is now larger than the Baptist or the Methodist in Western Nigeria, and is also found in Ghana. The biographies of these men and women have not been written, and the works associated with them have been for, for, forgotten. So also elderly ministers of God who were acquaintances uh, to these notable people are dying. Historical documentation and biographies of the leaders of other secessionalist church, such as Saint Savior, Saint Savior Apostolic, the African Apostolic or Apostolic Gospel, and many others varieties of church apostolic churches noted by Turner have not been written. Why the historicity of this group is traced, the analysis is carried out on the late pastor and prophet and evangelist James Abo. It was a literal dream that showcased Shonde and the enormous source materials he, though late, rehearsed in the phenomenal dream encountered. James Olumade Shonde, who can now be uh, considered as an ancestor, uh, appeared unto me in a dream and showed to me where he kept all his secretarial belongings that one wonder what, uh, what could this mean. The phenomenal trans transcendental communication through the supernatural incursion by dreams, according to Arotona's fourth feature of the primary worldview, is a divine instruction from Olodumare, the supreme god in Yoruba cosmology. Certainly, this encounter reinforces the desire to contribute to the historical documentation of the point at which what has now become part of African contribution 
to global Christianity branched out from the old European missions and gave way to authentic African Christianity. The emerging Christianity can be considered as the fruit of their labor, despite the new wine, in quote. Most of these, most of the key players of Aladria Pentecostal movement, uh, charismatic movement, were once members of the missionary churches. If God is revealing these things, who then is James Ulumade Shunde? And why would God want a biographical study of his life and ministry? What, we, what are the circumstances of his call? What are the marks of his ministry? In what ways can Shunde ministry impact the contemporary generation of priests, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, apostles, bishops, and reverend ministers? What is the experience like for a prophet like Shonde to walk under authority compared to freelance priests and prophets in contemporary Christianity? What are the gospel messages associated with Shonde? How did Shonde comport himself in terms of affluence and avarice in his ministry? What can be gleaned from his theological thoughts? What should be the prophetic role of the church and the state in the 21st century world. James Onubade Shonde was born in the post Second World War period to the family of a late Yoruba traditionalist, Chief Nathaniel Olushewa Shonde and late Mrs. Banas Olushola Shonde Ni Salako on December 11, 1953, at Baase Poro Shodoke Village in Obafemi Owode local government area of Ogun State, Southwest Nigeria. Baase Poro, according to Google map, scales is situated on latitude seven degrees, 10 uh, minutes and 58.8 seconds north and longitude three degrees, 37 minutes and uh, uh, 1.2 uh, seconds east, about 20 kilometers from Abeokuta town and Alakes Palace, 25 kilometers from Ibadan, and about 10 kilometers from the Lagos Ibadan Express Road, especially the west end of Unigambari Forest Reserve uh, along Ajebo, Ugu State. The situation of the Apostolic Church at the year of Shonde's birth was that of gloom, doctrinal crisis, uh, great division, and revival here and there worldwide. Thomas Napier, Nap uh, uh, Tombo, recalls that the Kaba area, northeast Yoruba, in Kogi State, South, uh, severed its relationship with us, with the Apostolic Church, Nigeria, in 1953, Pastor C.H. Rosa and G.H. Williams were instrumental uh, to the peace accord that brought them back. Meanwhile, about this time, Eastern Nigeria was experiencing a tremendous revival. The height of the crisis at this period was with the appearance of the latter Ray revival group that emanates from a Bible college in North but uh, Battleford, Saskatchewan, uh, Canada. The latter rain episode was first observed in the interview conducted by, uh, with uh, Pastor P.O. Ipe. Further information about this group was found in the works of Gordon, Gordon Weeks. Weeks recalls that, and I quote, this year saw the climax of disturbing period in the church because uh, uh, caused by the impact of teaching on usual, uh, uh, usually referred to as uh, the latter rain, uh, uh, Joel, found in Joel 2, verse 23. The Holy Spirit began to move among uh, this group in intense worship, prophesying, healing, and casting out of evil spirit. Most of the apostolic pastors rejoiced in this new thing, unquote, and compared it to their own experience in the Apostolic Church UK, uh, UK in previous years. 
and they were invited. The visitors not only preached effective evangelistic ministry, but they also attempted to spread their teaching that all denominations, that all denominational congregation, all denominational congregation and structure should be demolished and the, and the name the apostolic church be abandoned. Some of the African and European pastors were inclined to accept this teaching, but the vast majority rejected, rejected it and stood firm for the proven uh, principles and practices of the church. The whole matter was considered at the 1953 May General Council uh, meeting in Bradford. The aftermath of the night of the uh, May 1953 General uh, Council meeting led to the scheme that followed in the Apostolic Church worldwide. Two key European missionaries in Ghana and Nigeria exist in the church. Pastor J. McKeon of the Gold Coast Ghana and Pastor Sidney Elton of Nigeria by 1954. The exit of McKeon from the Apostolic Church Ghana culminated in the creation of the Ghana Apostolic Church and the later Osajipo Kwame Nkrumah's mediated uh, Church of Pentecost. In the case of LT, Ayodeji Abodunde clarified, and I quote, despite his determination to keep the fire of the revival, that is the latter rain burning in the Apostolic Church, Elton was not willing to take us or sanction a step as drastic as had been taken in Ghana. Months after refusing to reaffirm his consent uh, to the constitution of the Apostolic Church Bradford, he was still in the church, which resulted in a stalemate. He resigned his appointment sometimes in the middle of 1954. End of quote. About when citing which Elton's recall of the incidents of his father's exit at this time from the Apostolic Church Nigeria, uh, as is to say, unquote, my father was at Okeoye, and the people of Okeoye, the seat of Babalola Revival of the 1930s, said, no, stay, don't go. And he said, yes, but I must go. This is apostolic and I am not reaffirmed. This must be apostolic, so I must get out. But don't you, that is referring to members of the Apostolic Church uh, uh, Nigeria, uh, don't you leave the Apostolic Church, end of quote. Even though Elton told the church not to divide, some members went ahead and did into several units under different names but Elton categorically told them, and uh, uh, beginning of quote, well, I am not your leader. You are not getting out uh, to follow me. If you want to get out, that is your business, not mine. Pastor, end of quote. Pastor Rosa replaced, replaced Elton at Elisha. Pastor Elton, though did not establish a church, would become Who become the father of independent Pentecostal ministry, focusing on campus fellowships and targeting individuals such as the likes of Bishop Waleoki and Bishop Oyedeko and a host of others. Thus, as shown this part, all these challenges were facing the Apostolic Church worldwide. James Olumade's father, Olushewo, was a diligent co-farmer and a descendant of Shib Shure Tire Shodeke, the former the, and the, the founder and Bale of Ikoro uh, Shodeke. The date Ikoro was built is not known, but that will be much later than 1830. As the name shows, Shure Tire is a younger brother to Shib Shodeke who led a black people from into Abe Okuta in, the 19, in 1830, after the demise of Chief Lamodi of Igbeni and Balogun of uh, the Egba, 
Lamodi, uh, before his death, chose Shodeke as his successor to continue the Oyo Eba war. Iporo village plays a major role in the political and socioeconomic socioeconomic development of Abe Okuta from its earliest formation. Shreds of evidence of the cont contributions of the Poro community are recorded by the church historian, uh, Samuel Johnson, uh, and the pastor of Poyo, Chief Nathaniel Olushewo, was also a former Babaijo church patron of Zion African Church, Basi Poro Shodeke. He later became the Bale, the high chief of the village after uh, his uh, forefathers. Combining the responsibility of church leadership with the political administration of his domain, the mother, Banas Olushola, was a merchant, a farmer, a cocoa produce buyer, and trader from Shapala uh, village of the same local government area. James Olumade Shonde attended the Zion African Church Primary School, Basi Kuro Shodeke, from 1960 to 1965, where he obtained the first school living certificate. He later obtained a Bachelor of Theology at the Apostolic Church Nigeria Lona Theological Seminary in Asia in 2010, 25 years after his call to ministry on March 29, 1985, and 40 years uh, after in, in, in the last primary school education. His longest state title, Revivalism uh, and Historical Analysis, is an indication that he intends to know more about the historical studies around his calling. The revivals into which he was commissioned would change his orientation for the rest of his life. He maintained a, a transport service business until he was called. Into to ministry in 1985. The biography in his uh, burial pamphlet shows that he worked briefly with some private companies as a driver. Later, he started his own transport business. End of quote. Shonde uh, functioned in motivated uh, ministerial duties that include evangelist, pastor, teacher, prophets. But it, it is significant to note that his dual ministry of the prophet and evangelist was observably uh, comparable to the pattern of the ministries of the likes of Elijah and Elisha in 1 Kings 17 to uh, 2 Kings uh, 13. As a participant observer of the phenomenal move of God, in the Apostolic Church Nigeria Akoka Assembly, we witnessed the, the proceedings of the birth of a great spiritual awakening ignited around 1981 and climaxed in 1985. It was it, in what was to be known as Akoka Revival and the Akoka Assembly branch of the church in Lagos, Nigeria. The late James Olumade Shonde was raised mightily by the Lord publicly during a tiring and anointing service on the 29th day of the general 30-day fasting and prayer for, revi for revival as directed by the Lord through perpetual uh, ministry. Shonde testified to his prophetical injunction, to this prophetical, prophetic injunction in his letter uh, of application for ministry. In a sorted declaration, he reiterates that the injunction to hold a period of prayer and fasting for the whole metropolitan area in Lagos was proclaimed in a prophetic message during the monthly Lagos Inter District Elders Lord's Day prayer and fasting meeting held at the Apostolic Church 42 Cemetery Street, uh, on 7th March 1985. On the 29th March 1985, several days after the commencement of the prayer, later Pastor I.B. Fashion, a late Pastor, sorry, beg your pardon, late Pastor I.B. Fashion, later Apostle, 
result to an anointing service. Shown day after receiving the anointing oil administered on due by the Holy Spirit, he subsequently began to do the work of an evangelist. He wrote, he wrote his testimony in his application letter for full-time ministry with the church months after his divine call. And I, I quote, with reference, I hereby submit, submitted before you this application in accordance with divine revelation I received from, the, from God and is earned upon, upon me on the 29th March, 1985, during a turning meeting held at the Apostolic Church Akoka Assembly, which was conducted by Pastor I.B. Fasoni. The turning meeting started from, uh, from uh, 11 uh, March, 1985, end of quote. Sean Day's interpretation of his calling indicates an understanding that what he now possessed was given to him by Olodumare, the supreme being in Yoruba thought. This he expressed when he wrote, and I quote, in accordance with the divine revelation I received from God, end of quote. Shonde could testify describing his experience with reference to the, um, the, to the mighty works of God in him. His allusion to, unquote, the hand of the Lord was upon me, end of quote, is a figurative declaration of his encounter with the Almighty God. He, what was witnessed that day, can only be explained by the one who, uh, by the one on whom the Holy Spirit rested. The Holy Spirit came upon him immediately after he was anointed with oil. The smearing of the oil element in the head, on the head of adherence, has been an age long tradition with origin from the Old Testament in the separation of kings and priests into the high office. This has been practiced by every church tradition and the denomination. They accompanied, they are witnessed by the bystander standards, standards are an indication of the symbolic sacrament, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Writing on the, Christ, uh, the Christian understanding of sacrament, though defined in the context of Eucharist, Lewis Well defines sac a sacrament as an outward sign of the invisible working of God's of God's grace. The act of grace is the unmerited favor bestowed on creation from for outstanding performance. The whole, just as the meal of bread and wine of the Eucharist is understood by the church as a spiritual element that is administered as a means of impacting the needed spiritual power for special charismatic enablement. This means of grace informs three of the apostolic church tenets of faith, especially tenets five, six, and nine, respectively. These are, unquote, tenet five, the baptism of the Holy Spirit for believers with signs following, Act 2, 4. Tenet six, the nine gift of the Holy Spirit for edification, exhortation, and comfort of the church, which is the body of Christ. First Corinthians 14, 4 to 11. Tenet nine, church government by apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, elders, and deacons and deaconesses. Ephesians chapter four, verse 11 to 13, end of quote. The events that followed attest to the phenomenal call of Shonde to the apostolic ministry. Three days after, on 34, Mohai raised an alarm that shown they could not be found. Pastor
Jeremiah, are you still there? I see. It looks like we have some technical challenges. And since the event of last Friday, Friday 29th, uh, March 1984. It looks like we have some technical challenges. We'll, we'll have to wait to see if uh, Jeremiah can rejoin to continue with the presentation. Okay. Yeah, sorry for the break in transmission. Yeah, Rector. Uh, Jeremiah, if you could just stop sharing your screen and then turn off your video. Yeah. The connection seems to be a challenge. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, uh, the arena of the church was hence thrown into confusion at his disappearance. Pastor P.O. Ipen, the then Shomolu sectional pastor and Lagos area prophet, under whom Akoka Assembly is situated, had asked this to say. Late Pastor Shonde was a professional taxi driver who was proposing to change his car to Mercedes Benz and, and a member of our Akoka Assembly uh, during the time of Pastor Pashoi who was the assembly pastor. They had a fasting and revival meeting. At this time, they had just finished building the Akoka Mission House, but there, was, there were no rail from the first floor to the second floor. One Sunday afternoon, after the morning service, I was just trying to undress at Shomolu. The, the pastor and some elders came to my residence from Akoka and told me, there was an incident in Akoka that they had three days powerful prayer and fasting. The Friday evening, the Holy, the Holy Spirit came mightily upon one of their young men who could not leave the church. He was in the church. If you talk to him, he would, not, he would answer you in tongues. And fear came upon them. After the morning service, when they called, when they called him, he would answer in tongues. And should he fall while trying to descend from the second floor, what would they do? That was why they came to report the issues to me as their sectional pastor to think of how we could bring him down. Safely. End of quote. There's some useful questions. How did Shonde get to the second floor of the building that is uh, uh, without a parapet? The brethren who were jolted with fear could not have left. beside him on the first floor of the complete for instance where did he go where did he go how did they locate where he was it was gathered because some of us were not permitted were not present that pastor fashion summoned the prayer band and why they regrouped at the first floor of the mission house to wait on god for direction in the process god revealed to, to one of them who directed that they should go up to the second floor of the building. It is possible to know how it got there. Could this be a similitude of evangelist uh, Philip's experience with, his, with the spirit of the Lord in Acts 8, 34 to 39? The initial design of the staircase that led to the first floor did not link the second floor. You need to turn around to the back of the building to access uh, the other staircase that leads to the second floor. This staircase does not have 
any railing or guide, as Pastor Ipen confirmed. On the top, on the top floor, there was no parapet. How could somebody that neither opened his eyes nor spoke in understanding, but only in tongues and continuously in a state of trance, found himself on the on the second floor of the building? And for what purpose? Such were the experiences then at the beginning of the Akoka revival. James Tonuade Shonde, from the title of this thesis, functioned in most of the ascension offices and ministry gifts until his death at dawn Sunday, on Sunday morning, August 10, 2014. The late pastor James Tonuade Shonde was a man of many parts. Shonde triples as the Leshat metropolitan area evangelist, the Elisha area prophet, and Urojo district pastor. As mentioned earlier, he was called forth as an evangelist on the 29th March 1985 and the principal personality in the Akoka revival. Shonde served humbly under the authority of the Apostolic Church Nigeria for many years, carrying on his evangelistical, evangelistic ministry as a worker, unquote. A worker is probably, uh, popularly referred to as Onisha in the Yoruba terminology as they were called then before he was ordained as a pastor and Lagos Metropolitan Area Evangelist uh, in the same day, 17th February 1991, six years after his call and dutiful ministration as a worker evangelist that is uh, without a caller. The office would locate him later as the lead evangelist in Lona territory at, the, at his time. As Ipe notes in his book, during one, or, or, unquote, during one of our meetings at Olorunda Convention Grand, the Lord spoke through me that he should be treated as an evangelist and so uh, to be used by Lona authorities. Remarkably, the Lord used the same Ipe to call him into office of a prophet. As Ipe notes in the interview, he granted at his hometown in Wari. I had uh, I had asked him why he and I've asked him why he Shonde was with you at Shomolu. Did you take him to Pastor IG Sapo, the then uh, Lona chairman? He responded, no. But in Kansu meeting, God used me to call him to the office of the prophet, end of quote. He was later consecrated into the office of the prophet in the body of Christ in the year 20, uh, 2007. His later exploits in spiritual endeavor seem to have been foreseen by his parents. A reflection on his name is a pointer to this. The name Olumade may have been derived from the primary or mystical view of Olumarok for which Abe Okuta derived his name. Into, uh, note the preface, Olu, uh, uh, note also the word Okuta, many rock. It was to this Oduma rock, the Egba ran, to, ran for abode and security in the days of their flight from the Oyo and the Maye uh, assailants. Going by the indigenous primal uh, meaning of Oduma rock, it is associated with the people's consciousness of figurative hand of Olodumari, the supreme god in Yoruba conceptual thought. Yahweh is the Lord God over nature. Olu is also preface of Oluwa, Lord in Yoruba cosmology. Oluma, ma, mini mold, Oluma rock is a rock God molded and built with his own hand. This profound thought stressed African understanding, understanding of God as the Adeda, Asheda, the creator God. The name Olumade will mean Olumadewa, that is, his parents saw God's hand in the phenomenon of his birth, and so proclaiming the favor they had received, announced that God had brought this child to us by his divine grace. That, that Shonde's family lineage 
reflected reflects on immanence of God is seen by the spiritual disposition of his father. The theological term immanence indicates the presence or an ongoing action of God within the created order. This is God's manifested deed in the terrestrial world. It is, it is thus necessary to ask the following questions. What can be gleaned from an exploration of Shonde's life and ministry, and how can this address the problem associated with the operations of these offices and the use of spiritual gifts in the church? Findings from the research can help showcase how the Apostolic Church Nigeria understood and used this means of grace as an example for the contemporary New Testament church. It is observed that where the fivefold ministry is fully accepted and utilized, the spiritual and physical needs of adherents are met. The Holy Ghost, uh, through the gift bestowed on human kind, ed uh, edifies, exhausts, encourages, and comforts the church. First Corinthians 14, 1 to 3, Ephesians 4, 11 to uh, 13. The depth of indebtedness to write as an eyewitness, witness, as an eyewitness of the manifestation of the power of God cannot be overemphasized in the age of diabolical tendencies as practiced in some of the contemporary New Testament churches in Africa. Shown this life and ministry can be an example of God's presence, presence manifest in the life of a surrendered human agent. The research provides an opportunity to document the phenomenal event of an indigenous grassroots, grassroots agent who through who though began at the lowest ladder, rose to be a pillar and reference point in the Apostolic Church Nigeria through, throughout his lifetime. It should be noted that except for few recent interventions, the history of the Apostolic Church Nigeria would have been lost into mere oral history. What we had is, uh, is now was only, until now, was only Samuel Adebuega's uh, short history of the Apostolic Church Nigeria. During the research, more materials were found uh, written from Great Britain in the history of the Apostolic Church. See the uh, bibliography. Methodology. The method of research defines the approach uh, around the chosen uh, topic. How and what type of material and information to source for to carry out the research. Why both the autobiographical and biographical study of Jameson Olaje Shonde is intended. Shonde is examined in the context of the Aladira Pentecostal movement. The research is qualitative and as such, both literary secondary source and empirical primary source methodology is employed. The literary method includes a historical and empirical study of the umbrella movement and their contribution to Africa, African and uh, world Christianity. The empirical study utilizes the result of the philological research and the findings of the autobiographical and biographical studies. Thus, the trial of historical, uh, phenomenological and biographical studies and methods of study is set to enhance the study. The empirical home primar, uh, primary source utilizes field work that includes the use of self administered questionnaire, interviews and participant observations as part of the instrument of research. What's in AO Omolokoli presented a comprehensive guide to doing a biographical study. He has taught the effort of writing an African Christian bi biography that yes. seeks to explore- Jeremiah, Jeremiah yes. you have ten, 10 more minutes to make your presentation. Yes, sir. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll move quickly uh, to I'll move quickly to the to the source uh, sourcing materials for the research. Sourcing material for the research was initially taken. Uh, tasking, but the impression 
from the revealed dream encounter with later uh, with late James Olumade Shonde at the commencement of the study kept me going. Neither of my supervisors knows the subject. Nothing has been done on him. After some consultations with them, I was it was obvious one had to go to Lagos and try to see what can be found. First, uh, reading Alan Anderson mention was made uh, about Arotona's collection available at the Birmingham University. The collection was has lots of information and reports on African independent churches and the beginning of the Pentecostal movement. Thus, the need to visit Birmingham University uh, to assess it. At the proposal, it was discovered that Zimmerman Library, ACI, housed the same Arotona collection. Thus, the journey began at the at Copon at the, at the archive, exploring the collections. The material found therein point to locations at the National Archive of Nigeria, Ibadan, and Enugu, respectively. Letters were obtained from the registrar with the first point of call at the National Archive, Ibadan, and Enugu. There, a useful information was found on the early inceptions of the Aladra movement, especially from the precious stone brand through the Faith Tabernacle USA to the British Apostolic Church. The police record of the visit of delegates from uh, the British Apostolic Church, Penny Grove, South Wales, United Kingdom, and some materials on Apostle Ayobabadola, among other documents on how the Nigerian audience con conceptualized the movement at the onset and the colonial government's attitude uh, to the emerging group were found. Stand instructions were given to the others, the King's District uh, Provincial Officers and Chief to keep close eye on the unruly group. Uh, a series of arrests were made of the personalities at the center of 1930 revival and the role of Pastor Robertope, the only ordained minister among them, were uh, then visiting one prison cell to another. Next, uh, Mama Dickness Fashion, whose husband and pastor, the late Pastor Abi Fashion, poured the anointing oil on Shonde, was interviewed at Oshogo. She was an eyewitness and participant of the revival. Her elder son, Elvasia Kaode Fashion, was also interviewed to probe more to his late uh, father's uh, life and ministry. From there, the first visit was made to Elisha, to Rojo District Center, to see what can be found from the last district uh, center, James uh, 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 Shonde Sad. Pastor Odetola, the district pastor, and the Elisha area prophet was unavoidably absent. He was, trans he was transferred to Rojo to replace uh, the late pastor, James Olumade Shonde, Fortunately, the assembly pastor was only able to provide the preaching register where the Shonde signature was seen in several Sundays uh, and weekly services, which he presided over and preached. Such registers was not found in, at Akoka, the place of his primary call and later uh, Ayaba district center, the, where Shonde served for about 12 years each. In each place, the preaching register and other documents were, have been either destroyed or removed, except for the opportunity to interview some notable members. It was at Orileo Show, the DC Center, his place of third assignment that a similar service register was found. At Urojo, the next point of call was the Lona Theological Seminary in Bajulisha, where Chonde did his BTH uh, de a degree. The seminary is located in a quiet area at the outskirt of Elisha on the other side of Ifeapure Road. The administrative block directly faced the entrance gate. Classrooms were situated on the left side and the administrative block with a student hostel situated behind the admin block. The seminary library is located behind the classroom and on the west of the school uh, uh, hostel. The head librarian was accommodating. The library is, mod uh, the library is moderate. Shown days, uh, long guessing was located while some photocopies of some books suggested by the library were made. A copy of the long guessing was, however, obtained from the children. Documents uh, retrieved from the children include salmon notes, videotapes, photo albums, 
uh, that cover shown this early life and subsequent ministries, ministry activities, especially photographs of testimonies of answer prayers from monthly Temiko special day of a prayer service. But the copies of the correspondent letters shown there are uh, made with the Apostolic Church Nigeria, uh, Northern Territory was made with copies of his circulated prop, uh, message, prophetic messages, Bible study outlines, and special teaching outlines. Additional photographs were, were retrieved also from the magnanimity of Pastor De Adeoba in my visit to him at Odope to DC Center, Akure, on those on those stage on 29th September 2017. Adeoba reported to the surviving, to the supervising apostle for Temiko Den, uh, Pastor P.F. Usman. Pastor E.S. Awojide, the Nona chairman and the vice president of the Apostle Church Nigeria, had earlier granted an audience for, at his office at the International Convention Grand Ketu, Lagos. After presenting the letter from the registrar, he handed to me the author authorization letter to go to any place of the Apostolic Church to make inquiries and conduct interviews. We, however, he, however, stressed out if anything can be found on the evangelist under study, since the church is poor in record keeping. Mention was made of the frustration encountered at Yaba and a few other places. At some point, one of the learner secretarial staff entered at possible information at the pub uh, publication department of the church and introduced me to the editor, Elder DBC, notwithstanding the, with other, other challenges. Elder DBC, though uh, uh, through uh, effort, located virtually all the records of the special second Wednesday monthly prayer and fasting meeting tag the Miko, what, uh, what of my own. He also made available documentations of the regular quarterly meeting of Lona Chairman with area prophets and evangelists. Shonde was led to establish the Temiko prayer uh, meeting supported by other evangelists and prophets and was approved by the authorities of the church. On September 24, uh, 2018, a second uh, research journey was made to Rojo. And let me quickly uh, get to my observation. Observation challenges encountered in sourcing resources for the research. As stated above, uh, uh, garnering source materials for research of this magnitude is tasking but, inter but interesting. The motivation force was as being the interest and the quest to accomplish the set goal placed before me by the Lord in the episode of the dream, especially when information kept coming. I went from little information into a massive collection of oral interviews, videotapes, and the uh, uh, MP force reports and communicate around show this ministry. It became so fascinating to carry out the research. The common factor underlying uh, source. The common factor underlying resource gathering for this research lays in the lack of deliberate effort to keep proper records. There is general apathy on the part of the leadership to preserve documents for posterity. The National Archive has also been neglected. Hardly would you find new deposits beyond what the missionaries and colonial, colonial regime have done. The files and books are fast burning out. Lack of value for biographical studies among the apostolic uh, churches, seminaries is also identified. As the search continues from one district center to another, the realities of what chairman, the chairman, uh, the apostolic church Nigeria said, can be seen on display. The shelves, the storeroom files are not properly arranged Records of church of church records of the church are kept haphazardly in the places visited. The record you seek has either been removed or destroyed by the ongoing by the outgoing pastor, or rather still when the incoming pastor takes over the office. There is no value uh, placed on documents that can ensure that they are meticulous, meticulously stored. The research suggests a correction of this menace. The leadership needs to take deliberate steps to preserve the legacy of the church. We have not, as, as we have noted, Chonde served in both Akok and Yaba district centers for 12 years each. At each place, notable works of science and wonders were performed 
with tremendous growth spiritually, numerically, and infrastructure, infrastructural development of the church and its uh, members. Sadly, no record of what God did through Pastor James Oluwaneshun can be found, except in the history book, in the uh, history uh, both churches put together during the special occasions of 20, uh, 50th anniversary, like the Akoka in 2012, a new church dedication at Yaba within the, the reference made uh, in passing about him. Whatever was gathered about God's dealing with Shonde in both centers, such as tapes, pictures, letters, were handed to me by the children, thanks to them. Commendation, however, should be given to Pastor, late Pastor, late Pastor uh, J.A. Uh, uh, Akintola, the then Lagos area prophet and Akoka district pastor, who was the second in succession to after Shonde, it was in the file he left behind at Akoka that I found six circular prophetic messages from Pastor Shonde in carrying out this research. It was observed that a lot of details of the revival were being forgotten. Several days are forgot are being forgotten. It was also observed that there was seemingly bias biases in respondents' answer to questions and some form of rivalry among ministers showing an attempt to discredit and misrepresent mis information. Conclusion. An autobiographical research into the life and ministry of Pastor James Lumare Shonde is enabling document, documentation of a narrative that is gradually going into extinction. This can be noticed in the responses of some eyewitnesses in, process, in the process of the interview, in the attempt to reconstruct history. Some either forget important dates or miss the content of the event under consideration. Reality, the reality of the research became clear at this revelation, except for an attempt to piece to, uh, the stories together in this research, resources for the autobiographical study are not readily available as cons concerted effort have been expended seeking this, uh, out sources from whenever it can be found. Lots of people are willing to give information while some deliberately decline to say anything despite their close involvement with the subject of the research. As regarded as regards the institution in which Shonde work, the Apostle Church Nigeria, there is no standing policy put in place by the top level echelon of the church for categorizing and documenting archival sources. This, that is a deliberate intention to store information for posterity. I am recommending that the church should embark on providing an archive and a library at the central uh, headquarters, wide pamphlets, files, records, uh, reports, circular, uh, circulars, videos, corporate uh, tapes of uh, some of summons, special events, occasion, and anniversary convention reports, land and building documentation generated in each area, district, and assembly may not be destroyed as a matter of strict policy, and such document must be kept properly in those places until certain times when the document can be transferred into the central place. Uh, provided for it. Please pardon me to quickly uh, just flip through uh, the collection that I uh, got uh, from yeah, the... man, your, your, your time yes, is up. We will not have the opportunity to interact with you if, if you have to continue. We have only 25 minutes now to interact with you, and I think the interaction may be more beneficial. If a question Thank comes you, up sir. that you think what you want to share with us is relevant to you know, answering the question, then you can maybe raise it. Okay. The floor is now open for us to interact with uh, Jeremiah on his presentation. Hello, um, Henry. Uh, Jeremiah, yes. I found a lot of your uh, presentation very interesting, particularly as they occurred around the Lagos area, um, and it, they, they sound like very recent events as recent as in the eighties. Am I right? Yes. Right. Okay. Um. 
I wonder what the difference between the, uh, how different is the apostolic faith from the apostolic church? Oh, okay, they are, they are different. Um, actually, we have the apostolic faith uh, in uh, Great Britain from where uh, the apostolic church, Britain, actually branched out. Uh, but the apostolic faith in Nigeria uh, definitely uh, did not really have um, a connection with the apostolic church uh, Nigeria. All right. Any, any other question for Jeremiah? Yes. Dr. Inyanacho. Yes. Uh, Jeremiah, well done, oh, my brother. <laughs> thank, thank you, ma. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, I was thank wondering, you, um, especially with the video clip you showed at uh, the beginning, you yes, know, the sound was off, so we couldn't tell what they were saying. So okay. I'm asking if uh, it was in Yoruba. Yeah, it was you... uh, and translated. There's an interpreter that was translating it in English. Okay, so you have it all written down, don't you? Yes. All right, because that will be a, a source because it was happening live, as they say. So if you yes. have the transcript and yeah. the translation, then you already have a primary source uh, document there. Thank you. Yeah, I've okay. made a lot of uh, um, transcription from the videos that I collected. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you also. Are any other comments or questions for Jeremiah? Yes, I have a question about the concluding. It's like, um, Jeremy, I think that getting to the end of your presentation, it appears that you are having some difficulty getting information from people. Do you know why they are not forthcoming with the information? Any reason why? Yes, um, one very um, interesting reason. Uh, there are three um, evangelists at the time um, when um, Shonde was alive that they did ministry together. Um, I met the two, the two and agreed to interview them, and they both agreed. So I went after the first one at uh, Odopechu in Akure, uh, Ondo State. He gladly received me. Now, when I called the second person, uh, he is at another area at uh, Ekiti State. He bluntly refused to grant me uh, audience. Uh, he said he doesn't want to have anything to do uh, with, uh, with Shonde. And of course, when I pleaded and the uh, uh, post tried to listen underneath his uh, uh, thoughts, uh, I discovered that um, there are animosities. Uh, and of course, I found that animosity also with the first person that gladly accepted me because, um, of course, there was a time when they were being sent outside Nigeria to minister in the U.S. And so the person that received me uh, said, well, because he couldn't speak English, they did not allow him to go. But this other um, person uh, said uh, shown they did a lot of evil uh, against him and, uh, and I would not want to have anything to say. And of course, that drove me to uh, when I got to the children, to quickly look at the burial uh, album to see whether he was present that day. And I saw that he was present. In fact, he was one of the lead persons, you know, um, doing all of the uh, burial arrangements and all of that. But uh, he, he, he actually uh, uh, bear his mind uh, at the bitterness that he had towards him. And I don't know uh, well, what could have been the cause of that. Um, because both of them were actually had the opportunity of going to the U.S. Uh, the third person said, well, when he got to the U.S. later, the children invited him that um, uh, um, he got there and he found out that the people that were members of the church there were actually our members of Nigeria. And so why, why was it that he was not allowed 
to preach there in the first place. Because most of them, they are also, you know, from Nigeria and they could hear Yoruba and the message can be interpreted in English. Thank you very much. That is interesting. I think you did a very good job by even trying to go behind the scene to even look at the album, whether he attended the fighting. That is a good research. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yes, uh, yeah, Jeremiah, thank you very much uh, for the presentation. At the point, it's a very minor thing, but it's a, I think it's a serious thing. You are making the point that uh, some of the records that were left, other pastors who came, you removed them. I was just wondering yes. how you got to look that they were removed by, by, by pastors. Yes, sir. Um, in my interview with uh, one of the, uh, the, especially the overseer, of uh, Akoka Assembly, uh, uh, that will come up later. Uh, he literally told me uh, that um, the service register was uh, was torn. The, 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 the pastor said, well, what, of what use is this, uh, of, is this again to, to you know, let us just uh, uh, use it to... So when they were trying to look for one thing or the other uh, paper to use, it was torn. Uh, the overseer specifically uh, uh, told me uh, because the overseer is an overseeing elder, he's actually serving under the pastor. Uh, it, it was it was it was basically mentioned that uh, some of those things were removed at uh, at uh, Yaba Assembly. The uh, show this uh, junior brother uh, Shiji Olu Shiji, which I also interviewed at Shagamu, uh, told me that. Uh, some of those things at Yaba was actually removed. And of course, at Yaba Assembly also, uh, the elders I interviewed there uh, told me that uh, some of those things cannot be found and we cannot find it. Now, one of the things that happened is that when a pastor, a new pastor comes to a particular uh, assembly, uh, there are lots of uh, uh, used papers and documents that to them is not uh, important and they, they uh, recklessly uh, tear it and uh, throw it away. And um, it is there are uh, documentations uh, to the fact that uh, people testify to the fact that those things were recklessly destroyed. Even the, even the, the, national, uh, the, the national vice president and chairman of Lona uh, Territory said that some of those materials were kept in the rain removed from where they were, were thrown and kept into the, in the rain because the value, they didn't, know, they, they didn't value, uh, they didn't value it. That was why he told me, where am I going to get, where am I going to get uh, information? He categorically told me that the uh, information concerning this person cannot be found. But thank God, I was able to find some uh, useful materials from the editor of the uh, the press for the church. All right. Uh, Abraham, Dr. Wadi, I thought you had your hand up. And then Raymond, I, I... Uh, Yes, Prof, I did. But um, I, I was... I was sensing the, the question I needed to ask was being addressed. But let me just um, um, uh, raise it, Jeremiah, so that you can respond in full. Um, mine okay. I'm from a literary point of view, um, as you hinted at, um, the Yorubas have been advanced ahead of many of, of all of the Sub-Saharan Africans in terms of writing and documenting their history and their, um, you know, their thought. I mean, Yoruba is yeah. the oldest language to have been reduced into writing uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa. So I'm, I'm, I'm pointing at that cultural pride that the Yorubas um, can claim and have demonstrated, especially, and this can be extended throughout Nigeria in terms of the literary output, whether you're talking about the creative writers or, or otherwise. Uh, Nigeria still leads Africa in terms of uh, literary pro, uh, production. And you've hinted, at, you've hinted at storage of material, especially that case where uh, material was put in the rain and destroyed. But I was wondering, mm -hmm. um, even as you do this research and even as you you describe yourself as a participant observer, so you, you have a vested interest. Um, what is the message to the church in terms of uh, harnessing that cultural pride 
Uh, and Nigeria has a, a, a very clear claim to that in terms of digital, digital production and, and uh, biographies or statistics. Uh, what, in your, in your judgment, what is the response that it has ought to take? Um, whether it's the, your church, in this particular case, uh, you, your focus of study, or overall the African church, in terms of uh, preserving documents? Thank you, Dr. Waigi. Um, I, I know that um, uh, some, some uh, members of uh, uh, churches have actually taken time to uh, preserve documents. I think with the Apostolic Church, um, it's, it's, it's uh, because of the value they place on education. Um, um, it, it's appalling to see that, to note that um, uh, uh, informations are not properly kept. Uh, in fact, like I made allusion to the history of the Apostolic Church in Nigeria, uh, up till uh, the, this uh, recent time when we marked our 100 years uh, um, anniversary, uh, it was only the history, the short history of the Apostolic Church written by um, uh, Adek Bega that was available for, for us uh, until uh, recent time when uh, Professor Samson Fatoku uh, uh, committee uh, was put together to uh, uh, put together our uh, history. Of course, he has done a lot of work at the University of Ibadan on the Apostolic Church uh, generally. And so we have a big volume that has been put together recently. I think the, the problem with the Apostolic Church has to do with uh, the, the value they place on education. Uh, it is not the best. When you compare Apostolic Church with uh, Baptist Church, uh, with uh, Anglican Church in Nigeria, the value they place on education is very, very, very low. Very, very low. And I think this is also affecting. And I made a comment uh, uh, under my footnotes concerning even the, 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 the chairman of the Apostolic Church uh, Territory, because he was formerly the education director uh, before he became the chairman. And he was making the statement that uh, uh, information cannot be found concerning a particular person. And he alluded to the fact that a lot of those materials were just thrown and littered around uh, that rain destroyed them. So for me, uh, uh, it's a big uh, issue for me that they did not uh, Border um, taking care of the uh, informations that uh, were supposed to be sacred uh, for the church. I know that um, uh, in recent times, um, one of the the, the, the superintendents, uh, Lagos area superintendent, CEO, uh, um, who lived for up to 90 years, uh, was saddled with the responsibility of collecting all of the landed properties, uh, papers. Uh, which uh, a, a lawyer was kept with him to do so uh, before he finally passed on. But that, that uh, could have also been lost, if, except for God uh, leading them to create that office uh, for documentation. So, so uh, um, the apathy. Sorry, sorry. Who is on floor now? Uh, am I, I thought you were done. Uh, yes, uh, I am. I... You wanted to follow up. I just wanted to say, having identified the problem very well, Jeremiah, and witnessed the, yes. the extent of it, uh, perhaps you could think more what, about the solutions, what need to be done practically. As, as a ministry for the church, you know, yeah, yeah, and, and that, that was what I made in the, the observation I made in my conclusion, uh, that uh, steps should be taken to actually, uh, especially enlighten the leadership on the need to keep records. And uh, of course, I believe that at the end of this uh, work, uh, a step will be taken to uh, meet the, the national uh, head to really reiterate to them the need to keep informations 
and uh, to really tenaciously um, uh, seek after it and uh, preserve it. Thank you. Very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Rector, and then the Brother Jeremiah for the good presentation. If I heard you, you. right, your motivation for writing on Sunday is a dream you had, a revelation you had. I, yes. I, I want, um, I don't know if you could throw more light on further motivation for why you chose Sunday as the one to research on uh, so others can learn from uh, how to select a ministry or a particular minister in terms of impact uh, to the church, to mission, or any other thing which serves as motivation. Is, is that clear? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's clear. Yeah, thank you. Like, um, um, well, uh, if, I, if I could share my screen, uh, I would want us to, I want to show uh, to us uh, the, the, the extracts that I, I um, got down when I actually uh, received this revelation uh, on the uh, September 24th, 2014. Uh, you can see on the screen uh, what I tried. Uh, that was when I woke up about uh, 6.30, 6.38 in the morning. I quickly uh, tried to skip put something down uh, to uh, really uh, capture what I saw and then to try to reflect on it. Yeah, that is that the first motivation actually came uh, from this um, uh, dream because uh, there, uh, he showed I was with him in the office, uh, and um, of course, there were lots of uh, literary um, uh, literatures like files and all of that uh, here and there. And uh, he stood up and took me around, you know, at each point, showing me uh, where I kept this, and this is why where I kept it, this is his itinerary, and all of that. And uh, of course, for me, it was fascinating, and uh, I thought what could this mean and uh, of course uh what eventually motivated my uh, uh submitting this uh, topic uh, for writing but then more than that uh more than that um the the um the manifestation of god's power in the life of an individual um, i know that uh, several ministers have had several stories where people uh, uh, turn to diabolical means uh, to do ministry, uh, where people uh, do extra, uh, go extra mile uh, to add something to Christ. Of course, for my MTH uh, dissertation, um, you see that the Colossians, the major problem there was the fact that they said Christ is not sufficient. And uh, of course, they, they, they were talking about uh, adding uh, mystery, religion, uh, uh, seeking Apollos for revelation and all of that. But here I'm, I, I was particularly challenged and I had the opportunity of meeting, of being there the day Shonde was called. Of course, I had admission to University of Ibadan, but something happened, I had to come back home. And that was when they were holding the fasting and prayer. And sitting in the service, uh, seeing the pastor an anoint each of us with the uh, the, with oil, and seeing a taxi driver uh, turning to uh, a, a, a healer, uh, turning to uh, somebody that has a ministry where the dead were raised up, uh, the, 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 the blind were seen, the, the deaf and dumb were hearing, and uh, uh, the insane were getting restored. Uh, it became a challenge to me, and I said, wow, uh, this this is awesome. God can endow us with power from on high. Uh, the old uh, uh, Pentecostal uh, story uh, is actually true. God is still uh, dealing with men uh, that surrender themselves uh, unto him. And of course, learning from uh, uh, Pastor 
I be fashioning the one that poured oil on a uh, on a uh, Shonde. Uh, his ministry was spectacular. He has a, a spectacular ministry of prayer and the study of the word, which he gave to us. And of course, he leads uh, out in evangelism. He will be in the forefront. In 1981, he led uh, the team of evangelists to somewhere at Onitiri uh, in Yaba area of Lagos. And there uh, was a place where you have the mosque raiders. The mosque raiders uh, pour their charms on the people. Instead of uh, they being affected, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And that was why I said the beginning of the revival actually commenced in 1981 in the encounter of the evangelism team with those uh, mask raiders. And the fire kept the body until 1985 when Shonde himself was uh, called into ministry. So for me, it's a challenge to call ministers uh, back to God, that God still endure with power from above. Uh, and Shonde is an example. All right. We have barely three minutes. So if there is a, a last intervention, Okay, we'll have to keep it brief so we can finish on schedule. Uh, uh, Jonas, did you raise your hand? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, then go ahead, please. Just for my learning, uh, it, it looks like the research has been informed a lot by the dream. And also, I also hear from the language that there's been a lot of psychological influence on the candidate. Uh, to what extent was the psychological influence by your work with or the context in which you were operating, uh, don't you think it's, it's actually affected your dream or, or I mean, I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, but you were so involved that well, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how you were able to distinguish that this is a, a okay. voice that... Well, um, well, I... Thank you, thank you, Reverend Jonas. Uh, I think I've been detached uh, from Tone Day many, many years back. Um, initially, when I was called in 1985, uh, I told you I just came back from Warsaw Ibadan due to some itch in my admission. And uh, I was with him for seven months, uh, pouring water in his hand like Elisha did to Elijah. But uh, after I left to uh, the university, at the University of Ife, seven months later, uh, we were not so much um, close. He uh, was transferred to Yaba, he was transferred to uh, Urile Oshudi. All the while he was at Yaba, at Rilo Shudi and then eventually to Rojo. We were, we were not all that close any longer. Uh, so um, in terms of psychological um, uh, tendencies, I don't think uh, that is, that is the, the reason. But uh, again, uh, while I was going about you know, searching for materials, uh, it became clear to me that what, he has shown, what God has shown to me uh, through that dream was actually a reality because when I got to the, uh, to the press, to the editor, uh, he took me into a room when he opened the, the, he opened the, 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 the cupboard there. I saw massive material, documentations of his Teminko port that spanned for almost 10 years or more. Uh, in that place, which I actually transposed into um, uh, uh, PDFs, and they are available for me for analysis. And of course, the CDs that I got from the children, and one particular person was, uh, well, I was directed, each, each of them kept telling me, I need to find him, one on Larry Ujo, and eventually I got him on his way uh, to, uh, to Abuja in the uh, Lagos International Airport. And when I met him, he has 30, 30 videotapes of recordings that he has made on Sani Shonde. And I uh, have 30 uh, audio and video tapes that he, he got. He uh, uh, actually met Shonde at uh, 
um, Shonde met Olalere at Urujo Assembly, and he said the day, from the day he got, uh, Shonde got there, he felt that God was prompting him to begin to record all his, uh, 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 his messages. And thank God, I was able to meet him. He recorded, he has 30 audio and video uh, tapes of uh, Shonde's messages that uh, I, he, he recorded, and uh, I was able to get it uh, on pen drive, and it's available for my analysis. So, um, yes, um, the Sigma Freud have talked about uh, the use of uh, um, psychological uh, influences on dreams. Uh, the speaker this morning has shared to us how uh, Daniel uh, interpreted dreams of uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. So generally, it's an incursion. I believe it is, it is divine incursion uh, to the terrestrial world for God to tell us some deep secrets that he wants us to work on. Uh, he revealed to, uh, to uh, Pharaoh in those days and um, in dream, and uh, Joseph interpreted it. And the, the dream, well, we, are, we are not saying that the dream is, is psychological. Uh, by ACI standard, we believe in the spiritual and also in the physical. So that is the way I interpreted it. I believe God uh, has uh, actually commissioned me to do this work. Uh, and um, with the enormous materials that I now have at my disposal, uh, based on what was shown to me in the dream, I believe it is God that, is, that has orchestrated that dream. Um, our time is up, but let me make uh, this comment. Okay, Joshua has his hand up. Uh, we'll take, uh, and Henry, you also have your hand up. Yes, sir. Thanks. Okay. Um, quick, quick interventions, then. No, uh, yes, uh, Rector Jeremiah, thank you for your presentation. I was just drawing your attention to some comments in the comment box that uh, perhaps you can explore with the church uh, the possibility of their lodging some of their historical materials here at Akrofi. Uh, since we have an archives here, uh, that is just something that occurred yes. to me. Uh, and another student, uh, I okay. think, asked a question about your own materials that you have collected in the course of your research. So I, I think it has been suggested at different points, not just for Jeremiah, but for many of us doing research that uh, we are, in, are encouraged to lodge our materials in the archives. Joshua is not that right? who, who, who raises that issue? Uh, Angus sorry. raises that issue. Yes, I, Angus, sorry. Uh, yes. 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 So yes, yes. I, I think, think we... Jeremiah has to lodge copies of all the material in the library anyway. You know, that, that is the rule. The field material you gather, you have to lodge copies in the library. So that yes, is a, uh, the, the broader advice from this oh, side is to get your church to consider, you know, lodging such materials at ACI as well. Okay, let's let's take, okay. uh, before you respond, let's take uh, a final comment from Henry. Oh, well, um... Thank you very much, Prof. Um, I, did, I asked a question initially, but I think the, my internet went down. I, I didn't hear a word from Jeremiah, what he said about my question from the beginning. If, if you don't mind indulging me with that, please. Please, what was the question again, sir? Oh, the question was, I, I said, I found your present, uh, the, the historical account around uh, um, Akoka and Yaba area very interesting because yes. the deeper life, which came up uh, like a, such a big movement as well, came out of the apostolic faith. And what kind of relationship yes. did they have? Was there any influence from the deeper life uh, on, into the apostolic church at, at that time? Just wondered your uh, okay. comments okay. and overview. Yeah, thank uh, you. Well, well, okay, yeah, actually. Um, uh, because the church, Akoka Assembly, is actually at Yaba, very close to University of Lagos, yeah. where uh, the pipe also originated. Of course, um, um, Kumuyi was a member of the apostolic faith uh, yeah. 
at um, at uh, Bagada, Parida. Yeah. Uh, because the influence I had was that several members of the Apostolic Church, you know, at the time of the 1970 movement, 1780, uh, we have massive movement of uh, members from uh, 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 churches and including uh, the Apostolic Church Akoka, uh, where they also uh, went to attend the the deeper life, deeper uh, life. Uh, Bible studies at the Unilag because it's just Unilag is just about uh, 15 minutes walk from Akoka Assembly then. And it's interesting that uh, the Bible also uh, eventually kindled at uh, Akoka. Um, I think one of the key connections will be that the pastor I'll be passionate. Actually, uh, if you compare his teachings with that of Kumuyi, uh, of course, with the tenets of the Apostolic Church, uh, justification, uh, sanctification. Sanctification. Mm. Yeah. Which are the basic teaching in the Apostolic Church, too. And that was emphasized by Abi Passion uh, in those days when he was uh, uh, taking us through Bible studies and prayer meetings. That actually influence, you know, has influence on the people, and they led to was part of what motivated the revival. All right, I think Thank we need to. Would, yeah, you're welcome at this point. Uh, I think it's been a. So, I'd rather to respond briefly to um, Dr. Joshua Setu uh, concerning uh, the Akropi. Zimmerman Library, uh, like like uh, uh, when I first uh, visited the library and I looked at the Arotona uh, collections, I was able to get a lot a lot of uh, uh, information on uh, um, the Babalola revival, the Akinyele um, Akinyele involvement. Um, also, I got uh, things on information on Aina. Of course, we are talking about use of water in those days. I think in one of the presentations, and um, the treatise that uh, Pastor I know uh, wrote on the importance of use of water and all of that, I got a lot. Uh, um, I daily uh, um, work uh, on uh, on uh, the African independent churches. I wrote works. I got a lot uh, from there. Apart from the uh, source materials that led me to um, the Master of Ibadan Archive, uh, the National Archive at Ibadan, and uh, And of course, I've also made the video tapes, the VHS tapes I got. I've made, uh, I've transcribed them to uh, DVDs, and I made copies for the library, for the Zimmerman Library. Uh, I've done PDFs of all of the uh, collections I got. On the Parts of the Minko, which I'm going to share with the, the Simama Library and uh, some of those. And of course, I also found uh, materials from the uh, Church of Pentecost, uh, Ekropon District. Uh, I found materials on the Apostolic Church uh, and the Ghana Apostolic Church uh, saga at that time, and the intervention that the um, Kwame Nkrumah did in uh, mediating. Uh, for Church of Pentecost. Uh, I put it at the, at the appendix of what I presented. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Jeremiah. And we are grateful for all the feedback and the interactions. We need to bring our Thank first day to a close. And uh, on behalf of all of us, I would want to say thank you very much to Right, Reverend Bosman, to Professor Adufening, and to Jeremiah for the presentation. You, yeah. You would all agree with me that it, it has been a rich uh, period together, and we look forward to the remaining two days that by, God, by God's grace will all be blessed. I think that... Um, Reverend Bosman has reminded us of the importance of uh, leading, leading lives that can set a good example for others 
whether we are thinking about figures in the Bible, especially Daniel, or as he appealed to on a number of occasions, the life and work of uh, Kwame Bidiaku. And then Rosa Fening has reminded us of the fundamentals we need to keep in view when we are writing history, when we are writing stories about the lives of other people or indeed our own lives. The need for us to be able to gather facts, value, assess the facts. Some have said facts are sacred, comments are free. So facts that are established and are not in dispute, but when it comes to how we interpret them, we can bring our own perspectives to them. And that, of course, does not absolve us for meeting the highest standards you know, expected in historiography. And I believe that uh, some of us have been reminded of these things. Some of us have learned them also for the first time. What really matters is making use of these rudimentary steps in our own writing. And Jeremiah has also reminded us of, from a Christian perspective, the importance of knowledge that is anchored in God and may come to us through a variety of ways. We will have to, of course, test them so we are clear that we are in a position to articulate them to make them, as it were, sensible to other people, to articulate them in a manner that makes them understand what it is that we have discovered and how useful the knowledge we have acquired or the knowledge that we generate can be useful to them as well. So thank you all very much for your participation. We received apologies from Professor Walls and Dr. Ingrid Walls. They couldn't be with us today. Hopefully, they will join us tomorrow. On that note, I wish you a good rest of the day, and God willing, we'll see you all tomorrow. I would want to invite uh, Reverend Michael Norty, if he's still with us, to close us in prayer. Uh, all right, yes. Yeah, Rector. Uh, yes, Rector. Before the closing from the dean. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, uh, we will continue as the Rector has said, but tomorrow there's a feature which uh, involves uh, some friends of ours. Angus uh, Crichton is, is, has joined us, and uh, also um, uh, Kiama Mugambi. Uh, from the ATNP, the African Theological Network Press. Tomorrow we'll have a session with them. They've sent some documents and registry has made them available, particularly to our PhD um, um, candidates and also those uh, who have even finished and they want to publish. It's, 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 on, it's on publishing and some other aspects of the work of the ATNP. So I'll urge you to read the documents. There are two. So read so that tomorrow the interaction with them can be fruitful. Thank you very much, Rector. Yes. Thanks a lot. I'm sorry for the oversight. I had in mind to invite you to share any announcements with us. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Michael, you can now go ahead. All right, please let us pray. We are so grateful to you, uh, Father, for this day. It's been a fulfilling time beginning our doctoral seminars for this year. Thank you so much for the presenters and the grace you granted them to present and the various interactions that we've had. We pray, O oh Lord, that you continue to help us with all the knowledge that we have harvested from these presentations and discussions to apply them to the work in which we serve. 
and the ministries in which you have called us to. We pray, O oh Lord, that you continue to be with us for the rest of the day. We also pray, O oh Lord, that you prepare those who are on shadow for tomorrow, that, Lord, by your grace, we shall have another encounter with you and a wonderful time, Lord, that will prepare us to continue in your service. May your grace and blessings continue to be with us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all very much. Amen. And God willing, we'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you.